make the meeting official. Pursuant to Governor Baker's webinar. March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, this meeting of the uh, TAC is being. I don't know what conducted I'm via remote. Thank you. Meetings. And I every opportunity the will end of be my thing. given you. to provide opportunity for public comment, though no in person comments will be permitted. So, um, and as there is no, so this meeting of the TAC June 8th, um, 2023 is called to order. Um, does anyone have any? comments they want to make public comments they want to make before we get started I don't see anyone else in attendance so um, well, and thank thank you all for being here right now it's a busy time of year it's busy okay so uh, the first um order of business are updates on previous TAC items including the um the first one is the street lights policy and our um motion that we have. yeah so i mean I, I can bring them up on the screen um the reason i'm putting this forward uh and i is because my understanding so the tso the town services and outreach committee that they met last week and we're reviewing the proposed street lights policy um they had a pretty lengthy discussion right before i came here i was actually watching the recording of it um and they they do expect it will be taken up again at the next tso meeting and they do expect at that time to take a vote and then to forward it to the council um so the reason i brought it up is just i understand i mean i can mention some concerns i still have and i didn't know we did issue that very you know general statement about we'd like you to change this language um so we could revisit that, but if we had anything other specific that we wanted to say to the TSO and the council before they vote, I, I wanted to bring it up now. And if it's helpful, I can both pull up the um, that motion originally and then also um, and also just the latest version. Yeah, I think you should. OK, so we'll start with the motion. I mean, our motion and, you know, at the time that we did the motion, we had um, the two council sponsors, uh, Councilors Heineke and Devlin Gothier, had come to a TAC meeting, and I was under the impression that before they actually moved forward with like an updated version of their policy, that they were actually going to be reaching out to us more. So I was a little surprised when at the next meeting they had on the topic, they said, okay, well, here's our like latest version. So, and they had basically not um made any of the changes that we suggested um so just the fact that they did move forward i mean i guess the one thing that they did take out of the policy at this time is the language where they were looking at which neighborhoods specifically should have street lights and which shouldn't and and they also which i'm happy about is they did make it now where they're leaving the original language in the policy about um that there should be street lighting at all intersections because in the original version, my understanding of it is that in some of the residential neighborhoods where they were going to be removing street lights, for example, like Orchard Valley and um, Echo Hill and things like in the initial version, they thought that they they were taking out the street lights even at the intersections like of the roads within those communities within those neighborhoods, basically that they would only have the street lights um, out at the intersections with the main roads at least that's how I interpreted it and that's how I interpreted the map that the council sponsors had presented because in the map they didn't have any street lights at all in those areas but that's off the table right now and they do realize that that needs a lot more discussion and people have many different opinions about it okay so let me I'll just pull up <clears throat> okay. All right, so this is the first. And I know too that a few people weren't at our meeting when we discussed this originally and voted on it. And I think like Marcus wasn't here and um 
I know somebody else, Stefan or Christine or somebody. Okay, let's see. I'm going to share the screen. I was here for it. Oh, then I guess it was Stefan. And I know that Joe is traveling right now. I think he didn't he say he's like in Iceland or something, which sounds pretty awesome. Okay, so you can see like my screen with the PDF. All right. So I actually have been thinking a lot about, I mean, we came up with this initial motion um, about, you know, where we thought the streetlights should be. And um, and I still do really think, I mean, I thought from the beginning when they first introduced this proposal is that there has never been much focus, at least in my mind, on pedestrian safety and traffic safety in general. And the focus has always been um, on um, like just the negative impacts of light pollution and the negative impacts on human health and on habitats and things like that, which I, I completely, I do not disagree with those concerns, but I also just from a traffic safety standpoint and just my backgrounds, I mean, I focus, I think a lot about the risks at night, the risk at night for drivers, pedestrians, bicyclists. I mean, just that so many, you know, over 50% of fatal crashes happen at night. And so, um, which is disproportionate with like the amount of vehicle miles traveled then and things. So it is a risk. And I know I don't, even as a driver, I don't see as well as I used to see and so on. So, um, so I, I mean, I liked how we initially said that we still support the idea of reducing light pollution and we still have concerns about the safety impacts. So there was this, you know, we initially recommended um, adding crosswalk and bus stop as locations where street lights will be provided. I mean, I do still believe that those are good locations to have lighting, you know, and we did talk at one meeting and and I went on the district for neighborhood walk is that there are certain, even some of the bus shelters are very dark. And so like somebody could be sitting in a bus shelter at night and the bus driver wouldn't see them. Um, and so I do think that it is helpful to have lighting in those locations, but whether or not they actually have to be street lights, I mean, that may not be necessary. And also some of those places, particularly like some of the bus stops, I mean, they're not, not all bus stops are gonna get used at night, right? Like there could be bus stops near schools and there's some routes that have limited hours and things like that. So just a quick question. Um, yeah. the, the council is, is or is not moving forward with location recommendations for street lights? They are not moving forward with location okay. at this time. Okay. So, I mean, we can, I mean, we can remove that, you know, as part of our recommendations. Yeah, um, I, I just think that we could suggest for future right. consideration, but I don't know that we necessarily need to focus on it now, right? I mean, no, no, I agree. I agree with yeah. that. Yeah. No, that's a good point. Um, so I think we could just tell them that, you know, as we've considered it, like that's that's not a priority, just that we think there should be some type of lighting. And and the one thing that the sponsors have brought up a number of times is that with crosswalks, you know, instead of having like overhead lighting, it could also be effective to have, you know, flashing lights at the crosswalk or something. Um, so, but then there's a second part where they, we wanted to rephrase the section that, and this is from the 2001 policy where it says, you know, streetlights will not be provided by the town for pedestrians and residential neighborhoods um, and remove the phrase because that such lighting could be requested virtually everywhere in town. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just kind of pull up the reference to that. And I was just listening to the TSO meeting and there was actually some discussion about that with, um, okay, let me, so I stopped sharing right now. Yeah, okay. So, so this is the original language, right? It says here, it says, so the reds are the, you know, track changes. Um, so it does. So the policy currently says streetlights will generally be provided by the town as follows at intersections, at dead ends and end of cul-de-sacs, you know, for road conditions, staying potentially hazardous on all downtown streets 
and on other streets with heavy pedestrian traffic, such as vicinity of school and commercial areas. And then it has this paragraph which says the town council shall interpret the application of the above criteria to specific streetlights and the town will provide streetlights at other locations deemed appropriate by the council. And then there's a section and it says, however, streetlights will not be provided by the town of security lighting for private property or for pedestrians and residential neighborhoods unless one of the above criteria is met or the council otherwise deems the situation to require a streetlight because such streetlight lighting could then be requested virtually everywhere in town. So there was actually a discussion, I mean, as I was saying, at the TSO meeting about this and about the language. And I mean, the reason I had wanted this language out the second part of this language about pedestrians and residential neighborhoods is because it doesn't feel necessary to me because right at the front of the section, you're saying streetlights will generally be provided at, by the town as follows in these locations and that you can also provide them as other locations as deemed appropriate. So you could just stop there. And I don't think you need to say this added part about, you know, or you know, we're, we're, we're gonna make sure not to have lighting in residential neighborhoods, except for when this criteria is met. It just seems like a sort of negative um, language yeah, I think about the, yeah, sustainability I, and I encouraging the other moves. That they, that's where they're getting requests, right? I don't know if that's where they're getting requests. So I believe it's in the 2001 policy. Because I understand it's in the 2001 policy, but I'm also saying that the councillors have, you know, been getting a lot of requests to remove streetlights in residential areas because people feel that they're getting, you know, there's too much light or it's, you know, shining in their window, that sort of stuff. So I can see why they want to include this sentence because it shows people that they are addressing their concern. And yeah, it's supernumerary, but it is proving to people that you're doing the job sort of thing. I think it's also not really within our purview to take stuff like that out. I mean, it doesn't really affect us. Okay. I mean, right. So we had originally recommended that it be removed, but. Y yes, I agree. We did, but uh -huh. like at some level, okay. it wasn't really, it's not really our purview, I guess. Okay. I mean, I actually think, um, well, I mean, I think to me, it's, it is our purview a little bit just in terms of like, in terms of the, how the framing is happening around like street lighting and safety and safety in residential neighborhoods, including at night, which is because we do look at things not you know, just um, project by project, street by street, but like town-wide. And yeah. if you're thinking about it in terms of the context of like the transportation plan and sustainability plan and encouraging other modes and things. I mean, that was sort of my thinking um, with it. But I mean, we can, we don't have to say that again to them. I mean, and Marcus, actually, I, I mean, we have heard, right, that the counselor, the council sponsors who brought this forward had heard from particular individuals that they were not happy with the streetlights outside of their house. But when they were asked about it in a meeting, they really only couldn't, they only listed like a few people, including one of the counselor sponsors, like the their families themselves. And so it doesn't, I mean, there has been sort of mixed I'm not what I've heard, what I've fact. no, what I've heard, what I've heard from council, other council members, is that, I mean, there are a lot of people who would like more street lights. There are some people who would like fewer street lights. But yeah, I'm not disagreeing with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm okay. just saying, yeah. you know, the squeaky yeah. wheel right. gets the grease, right? If you show that right. you're getting the grease, then the squeaky wheel goes away. So you just put it in there and you leave it. And I think I do agree. Uh, that I think it, you know, with Kim, that I think it's a little bit, you know, we're pushing our bounds a little bit on okay. this. So, sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. Does anybody else have any comments on it? Okay. So when I've looked through the policy, um, I mean, what they're doing right now is because they aren't focusing on locations, they're focusing on 
the lighting technology and things. I'm not an expert at that. And also just on having down lighting and have and decreasing light pollution. I'm a huge believer in decreasing light pollution. And I wish, for example, that when Eversource was putting in these new poles that, I mean, Eversource controls at least like 85, 90% of the poles that have streetlights in Amherst is that I wish they were not raising the streetlights. That like does not benefit anybody. <laughs> it doesn't help with like traffic safety. It does increase light pollution. It means that it's shining more people's windows and disrupting more people. And it doesn't help with safety. Um, so I wish we had more control over that, but Eversource runs those poles. The town only controls a small percent of them and there's really not that much that can be done. Um, so, I mean, I support that going forward. Um, they have said the sponsors have talked with DPW and I mean Guilford is here too that there is you know there will be some time before any of this is implemented in terms of the new lighting because quite a bit of the current lighting will last has like quite a bit of left lifetime left right so it wouldn't be changed out until it's like nearing the end of that lifetime um the one concern I had had about about the way it's set up. I mean, so some of these sections here, I'm not even sure how relevant they are to the town because we don't have that much control. Like for example, some of these things about where the lighting will not be more than 10 to 15 feet in height. Again, I don't know. And, and there's- Well, I else. think hasn't that, is that, this is all part of the stuff that's not going forward this year, right? No, 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 this is all going forward. This is the latest version. Okay. Yeah. No, so, so this, is, this is the section that is going forward. Right, all the red stuff. So it's like a track changes version. So this is the language they added. And then the standards, what they did is they made it an appendix about the lighting standards. Okay. And they're talking about the illumination and the color of the light and all these different characteristics. Um, I mean, so the one thing from a safety perspective is that there's a section here about um, dimming of the lights. And that's one that I've had concerns about. Um, so again, we don't have even the technology to do this yet, but when I do support the idea of dimmable lights, you know, I've been reading the research about dimmable lights. You can save a lot of money with them. They do decrease light pollution. Um, but, you know, there are some mixed like safety results depending on how much the lights get dimmed. And so it does say here, you know, if possible and not cost prohibitive streetscape lighting, shall be dimmed to no more than 70% of the normal luminance levels by 11 or within one hour of closing time at the last bar or the live music venue in the basically the downtown or the village centers, whichever occur later, if possible, not cost prohibitive, and that all other streetlights shall be dimmed to no more than 70% of their luminance by 11. Um, so, I mean, one thing I get concerned about just because there are so many crashes at night and there are so many pedestrian fatalities at night is just about places where people are walking that are outside of the village centers, um, including around UMass and including when they leave the village center, like for example, it's a little hard to, to imagine now, but when I'm downtown, like during the school year, you know, on a Thursday, Friday or Saturday night, night it's so busy, so late. You know when you're there at like midnight one or whatever and that um but when this when the people who are and the bars are like full to capacity with huge lines and everything but when you when people leave when the college age people leave those bars and they're walking home you know are they're not staying within the village center like they're they're going to neighborhoods and things so i i've just thought that instead of just having it within the village center um, where you're not going to dim the lights um, as early is that you also just want to think about the places where people are most likely to be walking and where there's also likely to be the most car traffic that could potentially create conflicts. So, I mean, but other than that, I don't really have any other comments on the policy as it stands because, as I've said, they're not really talking about locations. So, or changing locations. So my question to the committee members is just, do we want to say anything more to 
TSO at this time, or do we just want to let it proceed to the council? So I think we just let it play out, honestly. But did we send our um, motion? We sent that original motion. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, you know, we are only advisory, right? Of course. It's in our yeah. name. And right. we can advise as much as we want. If they choose to listen to us, that's a different matter. You know, so ideally. Yes, of course. Yeah, you know, ideally they listen to us. But uh, yeah, we can't. I mean, we can go and bang on their door and tell them what for, but yeah. Well, I think, uh, I think as a advisory committee, and I feel like we've really, um, I, I guess I'm just differing a bit with your attitude, Marcus. And that <laughs> oh, no, <is> you can't. <laughs> mainly, we all are an advisory committee. Yeah. But we've also been doing this for a long time, and this has oh. been our sole focus. Yeah. And, and I feel like, yeah, okay, they want our advice, but we should provide the most sound, well, absolutely. No, no, I'm not, I'm, that's all right. so, yeah, yeah i mean yeah. because because yes i agree we are just advisory take mm -hmm. care of it but in the end you know we're all professionals and we want our advice to be the most sound mm -hmm. yeah yeah no absolutely i mean i work for the mitre corporation we're the a federally um, the mitre corporation i work for the mitre center for aviation advanced oh. aviation oh, system cool. development which is a federally funded research and development company. And we are government advisors. Like, yeah, that's my job 24 right. seven. So oh, yeah, cool. I completely understand, you know, we need to be advisory, but I'm also fully aware of the fact that, you know, it goes in one ear and it goes out the other too. So, you know, no matter how much yeah. you uh, push for something. So yeah, I think but so I long as we push and it's with sound followed, yeah. sound and sure. solid okay. foundation that's it I, you know. I mean so i see my role right so a lot of what i do for my job is do research on transportation safety um studies and so on so i mean since the proposal first came out last summer um and as i said it always has had like a dark skies focus like less of attention on traffic safety like i have myself just personally like contacted counselors in the TSO like a number of times and shared with them like best mm -hmm. practice here, share them the results of studies and things like that that maybe they weren't aware of. But I agree that we have an advisory role. I just like to inform, you know, the people, the counselors are not experts in these areas. No. And no so right. I'd like to like help them, provide them with the background information. So hopefully they make an informed decision. Mm -hmm. So I mean, that's my thinking about it. And I mean, that's why I've read about the dimming and, and I would tell them too, just, you know, as I've thought about it more, um, that we don't really feel like there needs to be the streetlights at all of, like all the places we indicated, we, you know, in terms of crosswalks and things like that, we just think that, um, I mean, that lighting is helpful there, but maybe crosswalks, I mean, streetlights aren't necessarily the answer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Anyway, um, so we and that's how I see it. So we agree. I mean, basically, we don't we just won't really weigh in anymore. We'll just let it play out. So yeah. we'll go from TSO and it will yeah. go to the council and yeah, I may write them individually or whatever, but that's fine. Mm -hmm. And we'll see where it goes. OK, great. OK, sounds good. OK, um, yeah. All right. And then um, save routes to school and the Amherst Regional Public Schools. So um, as I think I mentioned at the last meeting, so Chris Lindstrom and I had met with the new save routes to school coordinator for what the four Western Mass Cow counties. Her name is Tori Halloran. And um, we had a good meeting with her. And we're trying to meet with the school district over the summer. And there is going to be a back to school event scheduled for August 29th, which is the night, the afternoon before the first day of school, and to have um, like some tabling there to promote safe routes to school. And um, so that was basically just to let people know about that. And if anybody wants to get involved with that. And then also just updates and continued discussion. So there were TAC reappointments. 
So I'm assuming that Chris and Stefan are aware of this, but they were both recently reappointed <laughs> to TAC for, um, I guess, probably three more years, I guess. And um, and so at the last TSO meeting and then at the council meeting, uh, the town manager had submitted a number of reappointments for a number of the committees because a number of terms expire in June and he just wanted to get out ahead of them. And so they probably went through like 30, 40 reappointments and appointments and something. And so yay. <laughs> so thank you um, both for continuing to serve. So, okay. Moving right along. So the next item, number four, and so TAC, you know, was contacted about transportation safety in certain neighborhoods. Um, so I did share with you the wildflower drive uh, email that had been sent around by a resident there. Um, he had previously come, he's a professor at UMass. He had previously come and talked to TAC. On multiple still meeting, occasions. And when, we had, yeah. when we were still meeting in person, I remember him coming to the mm -hmm. police station and, mm -hmm. um, and then he's emailed and he's emailed again and people still speed in his neighborhood. Um, I actually went out to his, you know, I met with him once out there. I mean, I know him through UMass as well. Um, and in his neighborhood, so one of the things is that so there are sidewalks on both sides of the street there, mm -hmm. but just that the speeds are quite high and there just hasn't really been sometimes and there hasn't been anything like any solution to it yet. Um, so I was bringing it up both one just to you know to follow up on that, I don't know. I mean, we're again we're an advisory committee. If we had thoughts about that, um, but and um, I mean the police department was out there as well, and I think after one time they said to him that some of this a number of the speeders um, in that neighborhood actually live in the neighborhood, mm -hmm. um, and so I mean the research that I've seen. In terms of traffic calming, is that really the most effective way to calm traffic is to make the streets more narrow? Like a lot well, of so, other measures like are not that effective. And so Well, to I was me, also one thinking of, about that because some of those side streets, you could actually change the general flow of the traffic. So rather than having wildflower as a you know continuous right of way, you uh -huh. just change the right of way so that it goes up one of the side streets. And so you actually have to physically turn off the street to go along wildflower. So you're actually, uh, so if you, you know, pull up, let's pull up a Google map, right? Yeah, are you um, going to pull that? Are you going to pull it up now, Marcus? Yeah, you give can, me a second. There was a visual, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. So I I mean, I just, it it came to me in a dream. No, <laughs> <laughs> this, this, that I was looking, I was just thinking about it earlier, you know, when we, when you sent out the email. Right. And it's just like, I know. I mean, I've been to Matt's house a ton, but sure, that yeah. street down there, very straight, very you know, just great, right? Everybody wants to get to the other end of wherever mm -hmm. they're going, Trillium, whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, sorry, give me a second. But there are opportunities to change <laughs> the flow of traffic as people. Oh, where, did, where did Zoom go? Um, go down the street and so okay. um, this is like you know so he, the, what we're talking about here is the, you know old farm road goes down here then wildflower is this street here right it's very straight nice yeah. curve up and over a hill which also doesn't help with you know what's going on but wildflower doesn't need to be straight here right the road the direction of the road could actually turn off up here so there is a you know the path of the road goes up and around here and so you have to physically you know put your blinkers on or whatever and go around just put out a, a bump out into the road that forces people to normally go up um tanglewood so you actually have to then go around the bump and the same here with at, uh, what is it teaberry right just do the same but on the other side of the road so the direction of the road is going down this way normally 
but you are um, still continuing down the same street. So, sorry, I'm just right. I'm not sure yeah. I understand, but um. Um. So. Right. Okay. So, so. Yeah. So here, right. Normally, right. direction of flow is straight this way. Yeah. Really, what you're doing is introducing a 90 degree turn into the road. But what about if people wanted to like continue on wildflower? How so do then they have to turn off and go down that way. So are you are you talking about like a mini roundabout or something? Not there? really. Uh, to, not like... really. Not really. No. <laughs> um, I mean. No, I mean so imagine? so. No, I mean so. I'm trying to understand. So if you want to go to the right of Tanglewood and you're coming from the left of Tanglewood and you're on Wildflower, how do you get to the right of Tanglewood? So, sorry, let me let me draw it up for you. <laughs> um, I mean, does, that, does anybody else understand? Because I'm like confused about how you yeah, get I'm not to the sure rest of the I neighborhood. Yeah. So it's, it's just, a, it's it would be like a triangle bump out into the road. So the road markings and everything continue uh my now now we're getting into how good are my skills um right so we've got the situation road going this way um and i'm I impressed you're to... doing this on the fly but okay <laughs> <laughs> you need like a little road kit okay yeah, okay. yeah right going up this way All right, right. so right. We're, we're coming from left to right Yes. We normally just keep going straight, right? Yes. So one opportunity right. is to put a stop sign, you know, an always stop sign at this particular mm -hmm. intersection. The other opportunity is to actually only um, have traffic coming um, and shit. Where is the like thing turning that into a horizontal curve there kind of like yes that? yeah yeah so the, the the traffic would the the lines in the road or the whatever yeah. point you to go this way normally and there would be okay. some bump out on you know on the right hand side of the road that yeah. would suggest, strongly suggest that so okay. then you actually put on your blinker and turn in order to exactly go to go down the rest of the street and then because we had um you know, a road down here, we do the same here, right? So you're actually breaking up this road into three sections. So coming this way, you're naturally forced to go up the random street. You'd actually have to physically put your blinker on and go down, go here, and oh. you go down here, but you would normally force it, yeah. Hmm. So, just, a, just a thought, yeah. But it... it would that involve i mean so that would involve um you'd um, have to like the street. yeah well i mean it, it could be done a few different ways right i mean you could just put a, a little island out yeah with additional um asphalt and put a a metal sign up that you know points to the you know those ones that you have the chevron for going around a corner um, right point you're going that way and then you've actually got to go down the other way that could be that or we could go full-on mini roundabout with just the nice little uh bump of paint that you get over in the uk and kind of do something similar but yeah a little bit of mini roundabout action might uh pique guilford's interest because i know he's a roundabout fanatic or even um like stop signs right? well the stop sign yeah 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 but the stop signs are just like so boring. So. <laughs> they're easy though. <laughs> they're easy, but they're boring. Uh, somebody I don't know. Guilford has his oh, hand Gilford. right. I want to yeah, hear Gilford. what Guilford has to say. Yeah. <laughs> and also, I mean, I guess to but go ahead, Guilford. Um, one, why don't we just tell all the people who live in the neighborhood to actually be respectful of each other oh, and not have to oh, pay any yeah. money and keep just keep servicing <laughs> roads? Yeah. That would be a nice That's option one. Yeah. Option option two is yeah, many roundabouts, I think, is what uh is easiest because there's not it would work better, I think. Marcus's mm -hmm. idea liked it, but I'm not sure we have enough layout okay. to move that much yep. around on the road. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> third thing is we won't recommend stop sign always stop signs to control speed because it says in the manual don't do this 
Yeah. Um, and we pretty much stick to that. Um, next section down, Larks, Lark, where Larkspur comes yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Um, people, very, people just yeah. drive through the stop sign because it's so straight and you can see so well. Yeah. So, um, I like my best idea and thing. I, my best idea is to go ahead and just tell people to be nice to each other. If you can't be nice, go to Ukraine or Russia, do something <laughs> over there. Um, but I think I do so, like an idea so, of a mini roundabout here. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So the one thing I wonder about too is, I mean, when I've been in some of these you know, newer neighborhoods. And I was also out in a neighborhood that's like off of Route 9 out near, you know, Pelham Auto Body recently. And it's such a different experience than being on like the in-town roads. Like the street is wide and it's very smooth and the sidewalk is very smooth. <laughs> and And there's kids like playing in the street. And in this particular neighborhood I was in, you know, there's really no through traffic and I mean it's just and I mean there actually is almost no street lighting at night too but it's just it's it's a completely different you know traffic world like neighborhood than where I live <laughs> which is like right off of Route 9 and so but I do wonder one thing is when the streets are so wide like when the streets are wide like that and very few people in these neighborhoods like park on street because they have long driveways and things and there's really no need that i mean again as i was saying the research that i've seen like the best way to calm traffic is to make streets more narrow because it slows cars down and um but it did make me wonder about like some of our standards you know when those new newer subdivisions are developed like do the wides need to be as wide as they are um but then also I had mentioned and I included just um, the information about the Boston neighborhoods traffic initiative, because what they're doing is they are identifying like based on safety data, um, like different neighborhoods each year to do, they're calling them like traffic speed hump zones or, and also redesigning intersections and things. Um, as somebody who lives in an in-town neighborhood that does have speed humps, like it really has made a big difference in our mm -hmm. um, speeds so, and the yeah. cut through. I mean, and so I didn't know if that's something that the town could ever look at sort of, I mean, I know that, um, I know during the capital improvement planning process and when proposals, you know, when the public was um, making proposals that the North Amherst neighborhood you know, ask for a number of improvements in their neighborhood to calm traffic. And, and it was interesting to me because there are other neighborhoods and there are other streets where the residents are also concerned a lot about speeding and cut through traffic and things like that. But almost none of those other neighborhoods came to that process. I mean, so to me, it's an issue that comes up throughout town. And so that's why the Boston approach is interesting to me just because it would mean that like the town would put together something you know a multi-year plan about how to improve different neighborhoods like based on the data that of which neighborhoods need it most like what I've heard is that and I remember a little bit but before we had the speed the traffic humps on Lincoln and Sunset and and Blue Hills Road. I mean, there were on the section of Lincoln near the Southwest dorms. I mean, the traffic speeds were pretty high. Like they were up to like 50 or 50 miles an hour plus. And now that you have the speed humps, people cannot drive that fast, even if they weave a little bit around the speed humps. But so it's made a huge difference in those neighborhoods. So I do think that it can be a successful. Well, there's option. another, I mean, there's another issue though speed humps damage buildings. Speed humps damage buildings? Damage buildings, yes, because if you're close enough to the building, the repeated, um, you know, action, depending on the size of them, the 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 pounding that the, happens when the car goes over it actually induces, uh, you know, issues in the buildings as well. So that's why certainly over in the UK, they've actually moved away from speed hmm. humps and they have like small square um 
let's say table looking things to go so that you can actually almost like drive over them but it gives you a visual like oh crap something's coming at me um because of the fact but i mean but that's generally brick buildings for one and you know narrow roads with buildings right on the street so mm -hmm. but it's, it's just something that you know there are other things to consider around that so well i think like speed tables or that idea where they're you're saying they're yeah, longer they're, in, yeah, they're yeah. longer in distance right like so some of the right. ones along near on college mm -hmm. street near amherst college are speed tables mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which if you're going at a high speed you know it still isn't great for your car but i don't know right i mean so so guilford like from your perspective is it better to do things such as like mini roundabouts or better to have you know kind of some speed humps or speed tables or something along those lines or or to have certain sections where you narrow the roadway or i mean what 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 are per and yes i do agree that you know everybody should drive nicely in neighborhoods and things but if you did have to slow down the traffic do you have preferred measures that you like in neighborhoods um what seems to i don't know what's going to work and i i really um the, the, the speed humps do kind of work pretty well um but i think we're going to end up heading towards many roundabouts because we really can't narrow the roads for two reasons one the neighborhoods that have wide roads they want them because they have parties sometimes they want some place for their people to park and they also want some place for their landscapers to park when they come and mow their grass so when the road gets narrowed because the landscapers park there or there's a party um, other people complain so they, they want the roads wider and they don't want to give it up we we've tried narrowing a couple roads and um we've just run into pushback um <clears throat> so I, I don't know so if you have the many roundabouts, right, and you have larger vehicles, like they can, there can be an apron where they can like navigate around it. They so can it's drive not right a huge like problem, yeah, yeah. right? No, they're, they're, they're just slight yeah. bumps in the no. road. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're looking at the, like the one on University Drive at Snell Street and shrinking it down maybe another four oh, feet, I see. five feet. And you'd have, you would, you'd have the island in the middle, which if you're moving or you're having a delivery and it's a big truck they can drive over the island but if you're driving your little um volt or even if you're driving mm -hmm. your suburban um when you hit that um okay. I drove my truck across it it was not something to drive full speed across with a truck um so it works really well you um, should have been slowing down and being observant of everybody else in their neighborhood yes <laughs> no and i mean and there are some communities like i had lived in madison wisconsin and there were certain you know like bike boulevards there that they would just have like many roundabouts at like certain you know every certain number of intersections <laughs> just to help slow the traffic down so huh that's interesting so um another reason that i brought it up is that i know that like i know that um the resident on Wildflower who had contacted us that he's writing TAC, like TAC at whatever the TAC at Amherst MA.gov or something. But like when that when people write to that email, we don't actually usually get it. Do I mean do many emails come in there? Guilford no. or do okay. Cause it's not actually on our web page or anything. I think it used to be. Um it does. I mean it actually um it used to just go to one member and I don't know if they changed it so maybe they didn't change it to you when they know oh okay I mean but it comes to like you know the DPW um it comes to it comes you know, to Amber the TAC, or something it, it comes to the TAC email and it's actually like if you want to email a DPW you go deep you go to um, public works at amersonma.gov that uh -huh. goes to two secretaries in the office and they mm -hmm. then send it to where it needs to go so TAC just goes to to the two, same two secretaries and they just uh, okay. usually to me. Got it. Okay. And we don't get that many. This guy, he's just desperate. He actually grab. He actually is the town engineer lives in that neighborhood too. So the town engineer has to, who's friends with him, tries to avoid it when he's in his. 
I got it. Yeah. That's why you shouldn't live where you work. Of course, Marcus is going over there with all that hockey connection now. So anyway, he's a big hockey player. Marcus's kid plays hockey. So, okay. Um, and then, you know, I know, I mean, I think we were trying to go through this at some point and then we just, you know, whatever we were going to put it on our agenda, like you weren't available. And, um, but is there still like a running spreadsheet of the requests that people get? I mean, that come into the town, um, you know, about different neighborhoods or anything like that. I know it seemed for a while you were sort of keeping a running list and some of them used to come to TAC. Um, not that, you know, no. it should just be like squeaky wheel type stuff, but it's it's always sort of interesting to at least see where people are complaining, <laughs> you know, and how representative of town, like if we ever did want to move to a plan, you know, prioritizing like different neighborhoods or something, just to, um, just to see what, what you hear the most about. I don't know. We, we actually don't hear that much anymore except pave my road. That's the one we hear okay. constantly. Which then when you say, when people say pave my road and it's paved, they're like, well, we need a safe place for bicyclists. So then I want the road <laughs> to be, stay wider too. So oh, I see. that's the second one I was going to say, but I forgot. Oh, that they Thank want it wider for bicyclists? Is that what? Yeah. I mean, especially wild, go especially ahead. wildflower, you can go all the way from Station Road to Route 9 on wildflower. So that's one they kind of want, they, they would like to have wider. But then the, the cul-de-sacs is more of the parking issue and landscapers and so forth. Hmm. I'm surprised that people are pushing back and saying that they don't want the streets narrowed at all. But, hmm. That's, because to me, like in some, I mean, again, I was in this one neighborhood and there aren't that many cars speeding around because there's not a lot of through traffic there. But if there ever was, like cars could go really fast because nobody ever parks on street hardly. Or I guess at least when I was there. I mean, they just, they just seem so wide <laughs> and without a lot of on-street parking. You know, whereas I've been looking at, um, like on Sunset now with the contractors that have been there for a long time, like if there weren't restrictions with parking on Sunset, you could not have, so the contractors are parking on one side of the street on Sunset, but there would not be sufficient room for there to be like two lanes of traffic um, and the contractors are all parked like, you know, back like in the line, like right next to each other. So you couldn't even kind of like pull over like you could with neighborhood parking and kind of go around. Mm. So it's yeah. So I'm glad there are some restrictions on the on street parking and sunset. But, okay. Hmm. That's interesting. So well, I guess, yeah. So Guilford at a future meeting, like maybe at the next meeting. Could you still show us that um, running spreadsheet? Or are you really not maintaining it anymore? I could, for... but it's not oh, okay. really any more on there. Oh, okay, got it. I can. Right. I mean, I sort of, I mean, I sort of remember what's on there, but not. I think we haven't talked about it in like a couple of years, so. Okay, um, let's see. We're moving right along. And we can have a short meeting today, yay. Um, so other updates, like informational updates. Uh, so there is this bylaw about the snow and ice removal. And um, so it's like 5A. So it had been before it had gone to GOL last summer. And um, it came to GOL because there was a bylaw review committee I mean, Bernie Kubiak was one of the members of it. And when they went through all the bylaw, the town bylaws and tried to update the things about where it said, um, you know, select board and they changed it to council and they cleaned up some other things. There were questions about the snow and ice bylaw. And so it came to GOL and um, it seems like it's pretty close to going to the council for review and approval. Um, one thing, there's a, they have made some changes to it. And so one of the changes to it is to um, put, make the enforcement for snow and ice clearing. Well, actually there's two things. So one is to add um, other types of obstructions on the public way and on sidewalks, including when there's like vegetation overgrowth. 
um, such as like, you know, bushes and hedges and sometimes like private trees are in the way. And so that's actually in the bylaw now too explicitly. I think it used to just, there used to be a section that just talked about general like obstruction of the public way, but the vegetation is mentioned. And um, so that's one thing. And then another big change was to also change it because currently with the snow and ice, the enforcement is with the police department. Um, but there are always some, been some questions about that because, you know, DPW is the one to plow some of the sidewalks as a courtesy. They're the ones who own the plowing equipment. And when I, I know that when I've called the police to complain about people not shoveling, they often say, well, hey, you need to call DPW. <laughs> and so it's like, well, are you going to remind the property owners or not? And so um, they actually, the GOL committee, they put it under the enforcement under inspection which in the inspection department also looks at other home related, you know, enforcement in terms of like safety issues, parking issues, things like that. So I think that should be a good place for it to go. And we appreciate, I still appreciate uh, DPW's willingness to also be enforcing, but um, uh, the town manager and GOL wanted to be under one committee. So it's gonna be under inspection. So I'm hoping that this will make a difference next year and I'm hoping that there will be a lot of outreach and we will see. Um, and one, one thing I had asked them to look at to adding is um, explicitly including curb cuts and like curb ramps with the snow and ice removal on the sidewalks is because historically those areas are not always cleared and sometimes plows push snow onto those. And when that happens, it takes even longer for them to ever melt and things. And so I'm hoping having that language in will help. So maybe we can do some sort of out, outreach in the before the next winter to encourage people to do that. And also about bushes. <laughs> I know there's some places where I walk where the bushes are very overgrown already. So I don't know if anybody else finds I that. mean, we walked when we did that walk up North Pleasant, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. that was pretty bad. Yeah. On the east side of the well, street. the sidewalks are yeah. very narrow there too, right? That too. So it's like it just compounds the issue, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, currently, like Gilford had shared with the GOL community that currently, when the, when when DPW is contacted, you know, about a tree obstructing like the site of view for like roadway safety and you know or other bushes that are in the sidewalk that they'll write a letter you know they'll write a letter to the owner and say how will you remedy the situation you know this is blocking the sight lines or things like that um mm -hmm. but hopefully having it in a bylaw will help too so and it is enforceable i mean i think i feel with the one thing i like about it not being with the police department is with any of these measures i feel like the most important thing is to clear the sidewalk and not like to just like issue a ticket because you could issue a ticket and it could still not be cleared. And so, I mean, I'm hoping it will make the sidewalks more accessible. Maybe I'm too hopeful. But. Yeah, I also wonder about um, uh, if that interfaces with um, rental properties The you know, you can flag certain things yeah. on the proper, property sure. site on, on the, I, I don't know what it is to rental. I don't know the town website. Is there a, is there a site where you can flag stuff with rental properties, or do yes. you have to contact? No, uh, I mean I do oh. park, parking. I don't know. I oh, don't you know. do? Oh. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, on the inspection, like on the inspection website. Oh. It's not. A, there's a special like rental property part. I don't know. Okay. Cool. Like a complete area. Yeah. yeah. And right. so you could do that with, um, I mean, yeah, I guess you could do that with, and, and I guess maybe that would go with the inspection thing too, because I, I noticed at least in, in our neighborhood, there's a number of the, I mean, it's personal property, but it's also, um, there are a few rentals that just don't. And I'm like, how do you get away with this? How do you get away with not clearing the sidewalk if you have a rental? Oh, sure. Yeah. Well, and some landlords will put it into the lease. Yeah. 
but in Massachusetts, I mean, what I what I've read and in like the state Supreme Court cases and so on, it said that the even if it is in the lease, it's still the landlord's responsibility. Yeah, no, it is. It absolutely and that you can't so you can't really rely on the tenants to do no. it. And if oh, and no, if no. somebody gets hurt or whatever, they can still sue the landlord. And no, but I, I wasn't even thinking it was the tenant's responsibility. I'm thinking no, no, but some people have had that in leases. I mean, mm-hmm. I in another state. You know, it said like this tenant will shovel the this month and this other tenant yeah. will shovel this other month. And, but, but that's not really allowed in Massachusetts, I don't think so. Well, well, let's hope, let's hope the sidewalks will be better. Um, okay. And um, oh, guys, sorry. We're okay. Busy. No, bye. Thank you. Take care. So then the next thing is um the PBTA route update. So I was pretty excited. And um, last Friday, I went to the Western Mass Transportation Advocacy Network meeting in Holyoke, um, and Tate was there presenting about his work in the Berkshires, um, and there were also some UMass faculty presenting. But what you may recall, like, that um, Tate and his classmate, like, came, and they were talking about their route changes, uh, possible route changes to the PBTA system. And um, it will be exciting to see like what happens next with those. Um, so they're under, they're currently under review, but they did really look at, you know, equity issues and so on like that to try to expand the roots and serve the community better. So I don't know, Tate, do, if you have any comments about um, like a time frame for implementation or when they'll be out for public comment or anything. Yeah, so PVTA hired me this summer on a very part-time basis, which is fine because that's I mean, don't you already crazy. have another job? <laughs> like you're yeah, running yeah. a Berkshire anyway, program. So, okay. Like, you know, just here and there working on um, sort of like scheduling and run cutting to basically they're filling out because it's it's sort of like a level uh, level funding redesign. So it's not like, oh, we're pumping in many millions of dollars more into the system it's more like what can we better what what can we do better with the funding we already have anyway so now the next step is uh sort of working out logistics of that and there's some neat software that i get to use that automates part of that um anyway so that's the next step there because they have to make sure that everything checks out in terms of driver shifts and whatnot um, for, for in terms of how much it will cost um, because they don't want to put anything out to public comment, obviously, before um, fleshing it out m- more fully. I mean, the whole project was put out to public comment last fall, but in right. terms of specific changes, um, yeah, I don't know, maybe in the fall, maybe next spring. I mean, things don't move exactly super fast over there. Um, sure. But at some point in the near future, I believe, I would be happy to, um, as Tracy and I discussed, I'd be happy to go over like some of the changes that are proposed. I mean, I mean, it's public right now, but it's like the, the fleshed out thing is not. Yeah, no. um, yeah I was very finalized. excited about them. Yeah. Yeah. And he at was a even meeting. I'd be happy to right. just go over some of the changes proposed for Amherst with the understanding obviously that this isn't like the finalized proposed uh, like this isn't the fine-tuned version but well and of course there were there will have to be like a official public comment period and I think like in public hearings like all obviously yes yeah Uh, I mean sorry yeah of course and the root and the root changes right are like PVTA system wide that are being proposed yeah are they you know focusing on specific communities uh, okay. No, it's system wide. Okay. I think I shared the map with you. Tracy. Yeah, I thought um, the map was great. Can I show the Can I show the committee the map? Or yeah, I mean, I was going to. I have. Or not you can pull it up. It yeah, I was just gonna talk with or let give a PVTA a heads up first. Okay, then, like, sure, at that's our fine. Next meeting. Yeah, I'll we be can. Happy to like share it with the committee. It was so, awesome. I was excited. That's why I put it on the agenda, even though we can't. So anyway, so what um, Tate had showed me is like some GIS mapping that showed, you know, the different areas, like different populations 
with transit dependent riders and low income riders and things like that and how the new routes were like serving those areas better and it seemed great yeah and like i said that is a that is public but again yeah before i explain no the, no of course yeah i'd prefer to just yeah well and also i think too i mean just in terms of our time i think for us if if TAC wants to advise at all as an advisory committee that we probably want to wait until the version that's like out to the public right and then we could right. say something you know about it as an advisory committee and the council could weigh in and say like we love it or whatever you know that everybody right. can respond at that time because you know until it's actually out like who knows what could change or whatever. Yeah, so if, if I were to explain it to the yeah, so. it would be purely informational here. You know? No, exactly. Yeah. But I mean really, I mean, it's exciting that your class did that project for the PUTA looked at overhauling some of the routes and um, you know, some of the segments you and I talked about are just things that have like bothered me for a long time that they don't really work as is. So it's great that you guys did that comprehensive look and exactly yeah so thank you for that and i and thank you for pt for hiring these really smart grad students to do all that, so. cool all right <clears throat> so to be continued okay does um i guess if we don't have andy here tonight I, he probably has another meeting there are about like seven or eight meetings happening right now in amherst that's so amherst of us so I haven't heard any referrals from any from the council or any other committees. Um, and we didn't get any minutes from Amber. And so we had talked about the next having our next meeting on June, July 6th. And um, do we have any yeah. you know, items that we want to put on that agenda? So do you guys, do you guys have anything specific? Mm -hmm. So I guess we can, I mean, maybe if we don't have much of an agenda, we don't need to meet, we could right. take the month off. But if we do want to, I mean, again, we could have a short meeting like we are tonight about um, reporting back about, you know, what's happening with the uh, streetlights and assuming that the public way thing went through and things like that. And, and then, and Gilford, go ahead. We're going to be short staffed to support that meeting. Oh, okay. So, All right. you may so is heard. it better if we wanted to move it to like a different week in um a different week in July? July, yeah. Right, because you had mentioned that you and Jason are both out. Yep. So okay, well we don't need to have it that week then. Can are people available later in July to do it? Like if we moved it to like the thirteenth or something? It should be a, a month out. I could do that. I can't do the following week, but yeah. The following week is the 20th. Yeah. I'm I'm fine with moving it to the 13th. Yeah. Anybody? That works for me. Okay. All right. So let's do that then. Okay. Yeah, that works. Okay, good. Okay. So it so it shall be. So are you back, Guilford? Are you or Jason back in the office by then? Yeah, I actually fly back the night of thirteenth of the sixth. Oh, okay. So we'll, wow. <clears throat> nice. You're going somewhere where you get to fly. That's exciting. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If it's exciting, is yeah. that what you and, mean? <laughs> and so, uh, I mean, Guilford, since we're basically, did you have any other updates for TAC right now, or no? Oh, yes, no. Okay. okay. Did you want to, I noticed that TSO had talked about Cushman Scott. Did you want to talk about that or no. maybe at a future meeting? No. Okay. okay. What are I got they, that uh, impression. I got that impression from your email. So. Um, well, it's, it's gone to the town manager and he's talking to everybody. Well, and so also, I um, yeah, so Cushman Scott, I had been CC'd on some of the emails, but they had submitted a public comment to the council just about concern about the safety of the so Cushman Scott is a preschool in North Amherst and they're concerned about the safety of their preschool students and families and speeding. so on who are crossing the road. Yeah. Um and sometimes they're speeding in that neighborhood. So they had reached out to the council and there have been some internal um 
at the TSO meeting, the town manager mentioned that the police had been out there, you know, looking at like the tr speeds and traffic and and DPW has been involved in the discussion. They're going to go back and meet with Cushman Scott. And there's probably going to be a proposal to the council. So where is that? Um, this summer. Right here? That's the old, so it's, um, like, Cushman's had, building. Yeah, yeah, there had been a school there. So mm -hmm. I think it's on Henry Street. Mm -hmm. My kids, my one of my kids went there. Hmm. Yeah. And they're not open in August, right? Is that right, Marcus? They are. But oh, it's okay. like, uh, they, they follow the school calendar. And then over the summer, they have uh, camps. Which are... Oh, okay. Because I just remember when I had little kids and I was still working full time. And, I, you know, when I was calling daycares and they said, oh, we're not open. We're only open 11 months. And I was like, okay, that's not going to work. But, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. So... They're, they're, I guess they're technically not <laughs> open, but they are. Right. There's like, uh, they do have like a one okay. week break or something, two week break, maybe. I All can't right. remember what it was. It was a pain. Well, I don't know. It might, it also might have been different then, but it was like, okay, yeah, yeah I can't like do that. So, um, yeah. So I, yeah. it's like Henry Street and it's just, it's just a street that some people go for. Oh, uh, yeah. It, uh, no, I mean, it's always been that sort of an issue. It's just always the fact that I guess up until recently, there was never really enough people parking on the other side of the street, dropping their kids off, that it was a huge problem because uh, there's parking on both sides of the street. Mm -hmm. So it's probably yeah. just the case that more people are using it. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, so that is one of the issues is that I think sometimes people have parked next to the building, like on the same side as the building, but then yeah. families are sometimes parking across the street in a parking lot there. So then they, they the parents are like walking back and forth with like preschoolers and stuff. Right, 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 right. Yeah. So I'm just no, like saying I mean, to like the I, people I, on the committee who might not be aware of yeah, what that I, is. I used about. to walk my uh, so. kid to school <clears throat> back and walking along Henry Street down towards like Market Hill Road to, to just to walk through the woods was always um, a little dodgy, but it was fine. But yeah, I can see why, you know, there's a concern about it. So. Anyway, to be continued, and perhaps yeah, it will come cool. our direction. So, so the concern okay. is with the 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 people who are parking there. Not no, the, the concern, concern is, is with, with the, the traffic. The, the, the okay. traffic speed oh, okay. and vehicles not stopping for the yeah pedestrians who are crossing. Oh, I see. It sounds like why? I mean, sounds like the school should have more parking. That's what it sounds like. Well, I mean, the school the school actually rents the building from the town, right? Oh, yes. because it's an old like um, school, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Said. Ah, like okay. a ninety nine year lease or something. I heard about. It. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't yeah. know the details. Anyway, okay, all right. Well, so do we have? So I guess we'll we'll look at meeting on July thirteenth and. Um, and we'll see if we have more items, you know, Great. to discuss. So, okay. All right. All right. Thank well, you. everybody. Thank you. And it's like end of school week and graduation and graduation. so many things going on. I know. Fun Kim stuff. has a senior. I have a senior. Yep. It's, a it's really sad. sad. <laughs> have fun, guys. All right. All right. Bye. Take care. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you.